Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss, and the Batman details are slipping out faster than the wet ground beneath Robert Pattinson's stuntman. Director Matt Reeves just tweeted the first ever looks at his new Batmobile, and unlike the tactical tanks from recent iterations of Batman, this is a true muscle car with an exposed back engine that's definitely going to vibrate the hell out of those bass speakers in the theater. There's kind of this Mad Max funhouse aesthetic going on, kind of like an Elseworlds Batman. Not something of our world, but a hypothetical what if thought experiment Batman, which is also pretty consistent with some of the other creepy things we're seeing from this movie. These images also give us a clearer look of Pattinson in the new bat suit, which is definitely more form-fitting and silhouette-minded than his stunt version, but same weaponized gauntlets. More on those in a bit. I'm gonna drop an earlier than normal spoiler warning here because even though people who work on these film sets clearly have no problem taking photos and blabbing them all over the internet, enough of you want to go into movies blind as a bat to scare me into obligatory spoiler warnings. Anyway, the latest and creepiest image to come out from the film's production shows this mystery man, head wrapped up, something impaled between its eyes, and no more lies, written in red on the face. The figure is seated in this plush chair in dim lamplight, and we know this is definitely from the movie's production, with real numbers visible in the frame, and it's joined by a shot of a production clapboard. And additionally, people are claiming these images are being taken down, and where there's a cover-up, there's a legit leak. Now the first thing to come into many people's minds with tape head here might be the bandaged man from the Batman Hush storyline. Now Hush is one of the best Batman arcs that was adapted into an animated film last year met with mixed reviews. The comic is a dark noir storyline and I'll quickly summarize it and another spoiler warning in case you want to read Hush yourself. It, it, you definitely should. It's great. But if you're lazy or don't feel like it, Hush follows Batman as he and Catwoman try to figure out why so many rogues gallery villains, including Killer Croc, Poison Ivy, Joker, Scarecrow, a bunch of them, they're all acting out of character for them. They all seem to be being manipulated by someone behind the scenes. Early on in the plot, Batman fractures his skull and he's operated on by a childhood friend, the surgeon Dr. Thomas Elliot. Throughout his investigation, Batman's movements are observed by a mysterious bandaged man, and the conspiracy begins to mess with Batman's mind. He believes at one point the bandaged man is the late Jason Todd, but that old shapeshifty Clayface is involved as well. By the end of it all, Batman realizes that this bandaged man trying to kill him is his buddy, Dr. Elliot. Thomas Elliot blames Bruce Wayne and Bruce's father, and we learn that Dr. Elliot was in cahoots with a number of the rogues gallery with offers to cure the various ailments, but most of all, cahoots with the Riddler, who had been suffering from cancer, and the Riddler invented the bandaged man identity and named him Hush. And even though Batman ends up trapping the Riddler into secrecy over his Bruce Wayne identity by telling him that the riddle that everyone knows the answer to is worthless, the plot has successfully left Batman rattled. Because the final time he chats with Catwoman, she tries to stop him from babbling by just saying hush. But then Batman freaks out. He's like, why did you say that? Were you a part of this conspiracy too? Is Martha a part of the conspiracy? It's basically a long con to cat block the bat. It's pretty great. Now, when the animated film version of Hush came out last year, a number of viewers were bummed over the changes to condense this complex plot, like making Riddler himself Hush, and completely omitting Jason Todd or Tim Drake so that, you know, it would better connect to DC's current continuity. But I have always thought, well, maybe they left out certain elements of the animated Hush because those were elements that the film studio and Matt Reeves intended to use for the live-action Robert Pattinson film Batman. Like, we know this story will involve several rogues gallery figures, Selena Kyle, Oswald Cobblepot, the Riddler, whose name in this version is Edward Nashton, not Edward Nigma. There have been hints that Tim Drake or Jason Todd could be involved with the plot, with casting notices for circus performers and set signs for orphanages. Hey, we got a bunch of kids with dead parents here! And Peter Sarsgaard is playing Gil Coulson, Gotham District Attorney, who has got to be playing a bigger role in this movie. And Sarsgaard's very good at playing a villain. <laughs> Now we get this fella, Tapehead. Well, I really hope that the Matt Reeves Batman film incorporates some elements from Hush, like a noir mystery that constantly keeps Batman guessing, a romance with Catwoman that leaves Batman scarred, perhaps even Hush as a villainous figure, but I don't think this guy, Tapehead, is Hush. He's got that spike in the words. There's clearly more going on here. He is a victim of someone, and I'm betting that whatever Jamok took this photo was probably like, oh man, I'm getting a really cool shot of this movie, and hey, it's not a big deal, it's not like an actor's face or anything, and then like, Let's send it off and oh, I'm fired. Look, it's hard to know with certainty any of this stuff. Just like it's kind of tough to know if someone has a wallet in their front pocket because it's so sleek and discreet. Which, by the way, 
Thanks to The Ridge for sponsoring this episode. The Ridge makes everyday goods for the standard you don't see every day. They streamline your life by turning the things you carry, like backpacks and chargers and wallets, into tools for a better living. Their flagship product is The Ridge Wallet. It was launched on Kickstarter in 2013 and now sits in the front pockets of over half a million men and women. Just like many of my theories, my wallet used to be full of, full of lots of stuff. But no more! See, this is their aluminum wallet in the raw color. They have other colors, including some very flashy tiki designs. It's light and it's strong, and it has a cool industrial chic vibe. The Ridge is a minimal front pocket wallet that's designed to streamline what you carry every day. It has 30,000 five-star reviews and is a better way to carry your cash and cards. There's a lifetime warranty if you love it, free returns if you don't love it, but you're gonna love it. It comes in titanium, carbon fire, aluminum, and over a dozen different styles and colors. They also have these great backpacks and travel bags. They got RFID blocking pockets pockets, and optional device charging batteries. I love this thing. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash newrockstars. That's ridge.com slash newrockstars and use the code newrockstars. Find the link in the description below. But let's take a closer look at Tapehead. No more lies. Mm, CSI New Rockstars tells me that the victim was suffocated, poked for good measure, and then left in Bruce Wayne's mansion in order to force him to reveal himself. Or does the bat got your tongue? Wow, this bitch about 15 years old! More than anything, this victim tells us a lot about this movie's tone. We are looking at a very dark crime story with a high body count and probably some gruesome deaths. Maybe in the vein of Seven or Silence of the Lambs, and hey, maybe R-rated. Warner seems very open to R-rated takes on their DC characters, after Joker and Birds of Prey, and an R-rated Batman might be exactly what we need to have a good Batman movie again. Why did you say that name? And a murder victim with a message like this strikes the same notes for me as the murdered vigilantes from The Dark Knight. The one that the Joker left with the card reading, will the real Batman please stand up as a way to pressure Bruce to come forward. And while we're on the subject of duplicate Batmans, I should also point out the possibility that that bulky Batman suit that we saw in set photos and videos could be a secondary Batman figure, like a copycat Batman, a copy bat. Now there are two of them. Going around causing trouble to make people think he's the real guy. Like that spike and paling tape head could be one of the projectiles that we saw on that Batman's gauntlet. Those things look deadly. I'm just surprised that the real Batman would equip himself with easily accessible deadly weapons. Then again, I, I guess a batarang aimed at someone's eye would kill them too. I will just leave you with the question of who this figure is under the tape. I'm wondering if it is someone of significance, maybe like Sarsgaard's character as a district attorney or John Turturro as Carmine Falcone. Maybe even Jason Todd or Tim Drake. Are we looking at a dead Robin here? And for our thoughts on a lot of stuff, be sure to join our official Discord, where New Rockstar staff and followers of this channel have been mixing it up with some fascinating nerdy conversations. Join the Discord by becoming a patron today at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Who do you think this is? Comment down below and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Voss, follow new rockstars, and subscribe to new rockstars here on YouTube for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.